Donald Trump today folding in the face of extreme pressure from his base on funding for the border wall. After a visit from Freedom Caucus members Mark Meadows and Jim Jordan, who you might recognize as the tips of Donald Trump's spear in his war against his own Justice Department, Trump announced he would not sign legislation to avoid a government shutdown. The president now clearly hostage to his base as he likely views them as his only bulwark against possible impeachment and the political damage that could ensue. With every organization he has ever run now under investigation and several of his former associates facing sentencing for their crimes, the president can't afford any decline in enthusiasm from his voters or his support among members of Congress will crater. The Washington Post reports, quote, adoration from his base is Trump's lifeblood. The threat of losing his supporters' affection enough to make him throw the rest of the GOP and the federal government under the bus. As soon as he started getting criticized by them, he yearned to appease them. And the president's base was very, very upset with the president after White House Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders indicated that the president might blink and work to avoid a shutdown. Take a look. I would argue it's not a punt. A punt actually helps improve the field advantage. This is a fumble, and we need to make sure that the president stays firm. And a lot of people are, are, are very nervous this morning about mm -hmm. whether the, the president will cave or not. I think that not funding the wall is going to go down as one of the worst worst things to have happened to this Game. administration. Forget Mueller. The wall, the wall, the wall has to be built. This breaks a promise with his supporters. Four times we've promised him that we would build the wall and put it on the spending bill. And now we're saying, oh, oh no, we're going to kick but it to Al February. Five million, billion, measly billion dollars when compared to the size of the federal budget for border security is an impossibility. Somebody needs to explain to me how they said no. No wonder he's grumpy. He answers to those people. Donald Trump's message to his base, though, ask and you shall receive. At this moment, there is a debate over funding border security and the wall. Also called, so that I give them a little bit of an out, steel slats. We don't use the word wall necessarily, but it has to be something special to do the job. Steel slats. I've made my position very clear. Any measure that funds the government must include border security. Has to. Not for political purposes, but for, for our country, for the safety of our community. You got that? Steel slats. But the policy swerving has consequences. If the government shuts down, nine federal agencies will close. 420,000 people will work without pay. And 380,000 workers will be furloughed the Friday before Christmas. And I thought we were going to start saying Merry Christmas again. Here to take us through the day's development, some of our most favorite reporters and friends, Bill Crystal, now director of the advocacy organization Defending Democracy Together, Eli Stokels, White House reporter for the Los Angeles Times, former Democratic Congresswoman Donna Edwards, and Sam Stein, politics editor for the Daily Beast. Um, let me start with you, Eli. Uh, this seems like a very transparent and desperate and, and almost sad if it wasn't Donald Trump effort to appease the people he's most afraid of, his base. Right. He's not really gotten used to the co-equal branch of government that is Congress and the fact that you actually need votes to get something done. He feels like he can just howl at the moon, demand things, say he wants border wall funding, and that somehow the votes will materialize to get it. But the pressure that he responds to, it's not people in Congress trying to explain that system to him. It's Rush Limbaugh going on his radio show and, and ranting and saying, somebody explain this to me. Well, the somebody who decided to explain it to Rush Limbaugh happened to be President Trump, who called Rush Limbaugh today. Limbaugh went back on the radio today and told his listeners all about this call from the president and said, you know, and, and then we see the president basically marching in lockstep with Limbaugh and Ann Coulter and the, the most sort of strident voices that, that claim to speak for his base. Uh, and, and now you see uh, on, we're on the brink of a shutdown because a lot of members of the Senate and the House, they've gone home. They do not. They, some members of the Senate may have to come back for a vote, uh, possibly tomorrow. But there doesn't seem to be any backup plan here. And so either the president and his Republican allies have decided, hey, we're going to put up a good fight. We're going to stand there. We're going to make a stand. We're going to at least look like we're fighting for this. And we're not just going to take the short term CR. And maybe they'll sign it, uh, you know, once this fails tomorrow, right up against the deadline. 
But if they don't, we're, we are looking at a shutdown. And the president has already sort of rolled himself on this because last week in that meeting with Pelosi and Schumer, yeah. he said, with all the cameras in the room, proudly shut I will proudly take, what did he say, the mantle on this? Yeah. He's taking Brand, ownership. He branded it, right. he said, yeah. So, so they're sort of backed into a corner, too, at the White House, and that they know what the president wants, they know the pressure from the base, but they also know the president's statements that are already out there, that if this government is shut down, it will fall squarely at his feet. And it was pointed out to me today that this isn't just about the wall, it isn't just about the base, it's about what he needs the base to do for him in the coming months and, and year, and that is protect him from what he increasingly believes is possible. Possible, and that's his own impeachment, Donna. Yeah, I mean, I think that's true. And I think if you look at what has happened, he's clearly playing to the base. But here's the way this is really going to play out. Uh, they're going to, you know, Paul Ryan, Kevin McCarthy are going to put his wall on the floor for a vote. It's going to... It, Not a wall, Donna. His steel slats. Right, his steel slats. <laughs> that, that's right. I don't even know what those are. But, um, Making the steel that, slats you know, Maybe send again. that to the Senate. It fails. And then another measure fails on the House floor. And then Republicans and Democrats and Democrats again carry a spending bill for Republicans so that Paul Ryan can go off into the sunset and we can get into January. That's the way this is going to play out. And I think the president has, has you know, looked at his base and said, I need you for the future. And we're going to, you know, rally that base. And at the end of the day, it could mean those 425,000 uh, federal workers, but it's also, you know, checks that don't get processed, services that don't get delivered, parks that can't be visited, all of those things. And so this is going to be felt by more than just, you know, some federal, random federal workers. It's right, going right, to be right. felt by the entire economy. You know, I, I don't know that they can pass the the spending bill with a wall on the floor of the House. He will have, Republican, Democrats will universally oppose it, and he will have Republican defections, and some of those retiring Republicans are less scared of him than they once were. Uh, but he is, you mentioned impeachment. It's a terrible miscalculation by him for, for, for this reason. What does he really need at the end of the day to stop impeachment? He needs senators, right? Mm -hmm. Last night, the Senate, by unanimous consent, voice voted this bill. All right, Mitch McConnell, Jim Inhofe, Tom Cotton, conservative senators went along because the signal from the White House Ted was... Ted Cruz. Was Ted Cruz. The signal from the White House was, we're not going to fight this fight now. We're going to kick it down the road until February 8th. I think if you are a serious, you know, conservative Trump-supporting senator right now, you think, this guy is totally out of control. He's responding to three people on Twitter and two talk radio hosts and two random Republican congressmen. We just took a vote that might hurt us a little bit. That, you know, we, we look at attacked for the same thing. We, we did it. We, you know, they didn't take a voice, vote, uh, a roll call vote. It was by unanimous consent. Gives them a little pressure. And I just think the degree to which he might pick up a little bit with some of the uh, mm -hmm. people listening to Rush Limbaugh out there. But among actual people in Washington who follow this stuff, who've been disposed to, to say the least, give him the benefit of the doubt, mm -hmm. people that we've criticized all these months and years for giving him so much of the benefit of the doubt, right. this is a moment of just, are you kidding me? Well, I just voted for this last night and you're just pulling the rug out from under me? To further that, um, he's succumbed to pressure on this front, but he's facing pressure on the Syria front from... Republican senators, and he's, there's no signs of him buckling on that. I will say, I could not think of a more asinine legislative strategy than what Donald Trump has done here. Not only has he taken ownership of the shutdown before it happened, his White House signaled that they would weigh in only when someone passed something on that bill. The Senate then went and passed something, and now they're going to cut the Senate out from underneath him. And not only that, um, you know, he is basically saying, I'm going to shut down the government, then I'm going to get on my plane, I'm going to go to Mar-a-Lago, and I'm going to play golf during the holiday seasons. I don't understand, and, and, and to top it off, his big innovative solution to all this, to get this through, is not to reach out to lawmakers, but to brand it steel slats and steel not slat. a wall. Because that, as according to him, will give lawmakers the cover they need. I mean, if you just step back and think about just how backwards this whole thing is and how stupid at times this whole thing is, it is remarkable. And in the end, it may not matter. He may go down to Florida and he doesn't care. But to Bill's point, I think a lot of actual Republican lawmakers will be like, this is a little crazy and maybe we should rethink this. On that point, one of his allies said to me today that it shows that his base is kryptonite, that that without those people that we just played cheering him every day, he's paralyzed because he needs that intensity or members of Congress will no longer bend to his will. I don't disagree with that. I think that's basically, and I think he's also, he operates off of uh, emotion, right? And it was emotional for him to watch and Coulter unfollow him? Know that. No, he unfollowed her oh. because it was deeply personal that she attacked him. And he he's got, wrong and he's eight yeah, years and old. So, and so when he hears Rush Limbaugh 
yell at him over the radio, and when he hears Ann Coulter or sees her attack him on Twitter, and when he watches Fox News, obviously, and people are going on saying, you cannot do this. That's the type of stuff that gets to him. And that's why you see, you know, lawmakers and even lobbying shops admit that the way to reach this president is basically through the Chiron operator on Fox and Friends. Well, so hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.